It's good to be with you. It's Peter Ballas, here, cardiologist. Now, during the last episode, we focused on an introduction of performance-enhancing drugs. During this episode, we're going to look at what impact they actually have on the body, and in particular, the heart. So these agents, as we mentioned, they are various. There are anabolic agents and they are human growth hormone. They are insulin-like growth factors. And these are all endogenous anabolic steroids and they simulate the effect of testosterone. There are other agents that carry increasing oxygen around the body. So erythropoietin, and you might have you know, heard of blood doping, particularly in cyclists who you know, had been using this to improve their oxygen carrying capacity of their blood and therefore improve performance. But there are other drugs, clenbuterol and other types of agents that are used to increase metabolism and help with fat burning. And there are anti-hormone agents and estrogen receptor modulators. And these are drugs that we often use in, in cancer treatments for various types of cancers that have various receptors uh, you know, affecting estrogen. But these are drugs that are also used as performance enhancing and various hormones as we talked about thyroid insulin and uh, all the agents that can um, uh, simulate these compounds so there's no doubt the anabolics and the anabolic steroids when combined with exercise with training with a strict nutrition protocol do increase muscle mass they do increase strength and they reduce fat. And a common misconception is that they are only used by strength athletes. But they are used by many in the community and are also used as aids to improve recovery and strength in endurance sports. And we know that the mortality, unfortunately, in people and athletes using these performance enhancing drugs is estimated to be up to six to 20 fold that of athletes that do not use performance enhancing drugs. And approximately one third of these deaths is as a result of cardiovascular causes. So that is very, very troubling. Now, what are the cardiovascular problems? Well, again, there are various conditions that can be impacted by these drugs. Cardiomyopathy is a general term whereby the heart muscle loses its, loses its strength and ability to perform its job, to pump efficiently. So although these drugs are anabolic and cause muscle to grow, well, equally, heart muscle is growing for various reasons, both as a direct impact of the drug itself but also indirectly because the heart is having to work harder to deliver more blood and oxygen and nutrients to more muscle that is growing and building up, well then that over time can be compromised. You know, the heart is not immune to developing problems itself. There can be heart attacks and we'll delve into what are the causes of heart attacks in these, in these groups. It can change the cholesterol profile and it can often cause the bad cholesterol to increase and the good cholesterol to lower. And that ratio, that balance, has a major impact on risk of developing further cholesterol buildup in the arteries, causing blockages, causing heart attacks. As the muscle grows, as the muscle tries to keep up with the rest of the body and to ensure that it's you know, giving the blood to, the nutrients to the rest of the muscles, well, itself can develop scar tissue and we often hear the notion that you know no pain no gain and when bodybuilders and when we are performing weight lifting exercise the aim is to increase the amount of weight we're lifting and that causes microscopic tears and injury and trauma in the muscle and the body's reaction and response to that microscopic trauma at a cellular level is what causes the muscle to grow and hypertrophy. And that's what you know we're trying to achieve. Well, equally, when the heart's pumping harder 
to deliver more blood, the heart muscle is growing, and in doing that it becomes injured. Scar tissue can develop inside the muscle, and that scar tissue can affect the rhythm of the heart, or the wiring of the heart, causing potentially fatal rhythm problems where the heart just stops. So the effects on the heart I like to classify as direct and indirect. And many of these post-mortem studies that have been undertaken, and also studies using ultrasound, which is a very sensitive way to look at heart function, and MRI scans, which are probably the, the gold standard technique in looking at heart muscle and heart function, have confirmed that cardiomyopathy or weakening in the heart muscle can occur and is often attributed to hypertrophy, as in muscle growth. And that increasing muscle mass and it is what typically causes the ventricle, the left ventricle, to increase in thickness and that causes more scarring and can then lead to problems with the heart. And then the heart is not able to pump efficiently, fluid builds up, and that can cause a condition called congestive cardiac failure. So this scarring that develops in the heart, as I said, can also affect the wiring of our heart. And it's not only a problem with the arteries and cholesterol that develops as a result of these drugs, because it's often the case that when young bodybuilders who have been using these drugs for many, many years have tests to look for blockages, and that might be a calcium test or a CT coronary angiogram, they often come back clean. No blockages whatsoever. So again, blockages are only one part of the impact that these drugs have. The other part is one that is perhaps less known, and that is the hypertrophy the growth of the heart muscle itself that then leads to a condition called remodeling when the whole heart muscle is developing little scar tissue inside and is growing and is expanding and that has a bearing on the rhythm and the electrics of the heart that can put us at risk. There are also other effects of these performance enhancing drugs and steroids on the heart. It causes higher blood pressure and high blood pressure itself leads to many of the issues with heart disease. It can cause congestive cardiac failure and we do see people who do suffer these, you know, uh, unfortunately go into hospital with severe heart failure, the heart muscle pumping, you know, only 10 or 20 percent, you might hear that. Well, that is a major contributing factor as a result of these steroids. These drugs have many, many impacts. And as I said, it's not only the impact on the heart, it's lowering your good cholesterol, increasing the bad cholesterol, increasing blood pressure, causing the heart muscle to increase and to thicken. It can also have an impact on our clotting and our body's ability to prevent clots. So there's an increased tendency for clots to build up in the body. There are other conditions that can impact as a result of the growth in muscles and tissue around our body, particularly around the neck. Well, you might hear bodybuilders talk about the use of CPAP for obstructive sleep apnea. And that, when left untreated, has a major impact on the heart. When oxygen is not able to be delivered appropriately from the lungs into our body, the heart has to work much harder. There's an increased risk of higher blood pressure, there's an increased risk of rhythm disturbances, and in one in particular called atrial fibrillation. And that all has a bearing on our heart and causes increased risk of cardiac diseases, but also, more worryingly, cardiac death. And the indirect effects, well, look, that results from many of the toxic effects of these drugs, but also on the impact of the heart having to train a lot more to feed more muscle in the body. And when the heart has, has to work more and you know, has, to, has to pump harder, well, that's when problems can develop. The scar tissue can grow inside the muscle, can cause problems with the rhythm, and the heart can start you know, playing up, start causing congestion, start to cause fluid buildup, starting to cause palpitations, the heart racing, and uh, an increased risk of other arrhythmias such as atrial fibrillation 
or more, more worryingly other conditions called ventricular tachycardia. So there are some useful tests that I feel are important to look at the heart. And these are not only, you know, for patients who have known heart conditions, but these are tests that may be used as a screening to look for underlying causes of problems with the heart. The electrocardiogram, the ultrasound, the echocardiogram, the cardiac MRI scan. You might have heard of one called gated blood pool scan. And it's a nuclear scan that looks at how efficient the heart is at pumping. But other st studies like sleep tests to look for sleep apnea, blood tests, of course, to look at blood count, the hematocrit, the thyroid levels, the cholesterol, the good and bad, the triglycerides, liver function, kidney function, the clotting profile. Um, yes, calcium tests can be very useful, CT scans, blood pressure monitors to look at you know, high blood pressure, and heart rate monitors to look for any possible rhythm problems. And the key to minimizing the risks of these drugs is, of course, not to use them in the first place. So that's, that's you know, what I would like to advocate for. But when they are used to minimize the dosages, minimize the combination of various agents, focus on monitoring things like blood pressure. It's critical that these are done under careful medical and health observation. Looking at controlling sleep apnea, using things like CPAP, using agents that may help reduce heart enlargement and these are drugs that we use for things like high blood pressure you might have heard things like ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers there are other agents that can be useful to help control rhythm problems and atrial fibrillation and the heart rate racing you know beta blockers there are diuretics that might be useful at helping the heart muscle improve the strength when the heart muscle is weak and congestion is developed and controlling lipids you know, trying to reduce that bad cholesterol buildup. And, you know, statins, there are fibrates, there's, you know, azetamide is another drug. Diabetic control, again, critical here. There's a lot of carbohydrate loading and insulin use. Well, that has an amazing toll on the body's ability to produce insulin through the pancreas. And diabetes is at increased risk. Not smoking not taking other illicit drugs. There are blood thinning medication that your doctor may also uh, find useful for you. And then uh, you look at implantable devices and defibrillators for those who have a definite reduction in heart muscle who would be at risk of developing a sinister problem before it happens. So hopefully you found it useful. It's a very, very important topic. I've covered a lot of parts here. So please feel free to provide your comments and, and feedback that you might have. It's a topic that is not often discussed, but one that you know has tragically caused many otherwise fit and healthy young athletes and bodybuilders to succumb. So having a bit of knowledge and doing this, if you're going to do it under a supervised environment, is of paramount importance. Until the next video, bye for now.